What's up everyone, my name is Myron and I'm a cinematographer and colorist from Detroit, Michigan. So today I'm going to show you the best settings in DaVinci Resolve, especially so you don't have to run into that dreaded gamma shift. Right now there is a trend on YouTube where all the big creators are starting to switch to DaVinci Resolve. And actually, that's awesome. My only problem with that is that they're showing you videos of techniques that they don't fully understand and they're really just making this video just for views. So in this video, I'm going to show you the best settings for both Apple and PC. So that way, like I said, you don't run into that gamma shift when you're exporting your projects. Let's hop into Resolve. Okay guys, so now we're on Resolve. And I'm going to show you the settings that you need to use if you're using the Mac. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over to right here. Then we're going to click on Preference. Then we're going to click on General. Then you need to actually click these uh, first three settings to actually make sure that you're getting an accurate representation of Rec. 709 on your monitor when you're using Resolve, if you're using the Mac. And now we're going to go over to our timeline color space. And we're just going to go right here to color management. Now I use different settings, so I'm going to show you. So I do use um, a wide gamut in DaVinci Color Manage, but if you're not a colorist or you're not looking to be a colorist or you're not looking to actually um, use the tools that are available when you use these settings, then if you're using a Mac, the first thing you're gonna do is go to DaVinci YRGB, then you're gonna go down and then you're gonna use Rec 709A. And then you're gonna do the same as timeline. And once you save that, that will be your image. And you will actually have the same image on your Mac that you will on your iPhone and iPad. And you won't have no issues at all. But if you're using an HP, if you're using like a PC, then you know you'll use different settings. You'll actually go back and just go back to color management. You can stay at DaVinci YRGB, but you don't have to stay at Rec. 709 because when you're grading in Rec. 709, you're only limiting yourself to like six stops of dynamic range. So if you like me have a Fujifilm X-H2S and use a 14 stops of dynamic range, you're already capping yourself less than half of what you use. And there is a difference in Resolve. Like once you use different color spaces, there is a difference and you'll definitely see your highlights. But if you go up to timeline color space, you can actually use the DaVinci wide gamut. That would give you um, the biggest color space you can actually grade your image in. And you don't have to worry about limiting yourself. So it has a higher ceiling than Rec. 709 does. And then, you know, you can go down to Rec. 709 right here. Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. Sorry, let me find it. There we go. Then you can go ahead and hit save. And then you know, you're actually color grade in your correct settings. Now we're going to go over to, um, now we're going to go over to export. Sorry. In the settings I use for export is, um, different. You could actually, these don't have to be like one size fit all, but the most important thing you want to do is actually go down to your color space tag. Now I use Rec. 709 for my color space tag and my gamma tag gamma 2.4. And that's because that is what my um, my monitor is actually calibrated to. I calibrated my own monitor. It's not really that hard either. Um, but my monitor is actually calibrated to gamma 2.4. And since that is, I have to use certain settings to actually make sure that my color, I don't have gamma shift for my colors or my image. But if you're not using like a calibrated monitor that you did yourself, um, then you can actually go down and just use Rec. 709 for both. Sorry, let me find it. There you go. You can actually use Rec. 709 for both and your image should come out. Oh, actually your image will come out um, with no gamma shift at all. And then I use these settings to make sure I use the best possible image quality when my um, image is actually, um, when my image is actually um, exporting. And that's pretty much it guys. Hey guys, I hope that video was helpful. Now I've been using DaVinci Resolve for about four to five years now. And to be honest, I didn't know how powerful it was, so I started color grading when I started learning from professional colorists. Now the settings I showed you are the ones that I did learn from professional colors, except the Apple settings. Those I had to learn myself last year after I completed my first color grading course. So if you have any questions, just please feel free to leave them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. Peace.